today grade 12 so in last week's lessons we basically revised the last terms worth of work okay so we did questions based on your third terms work in this week we're going to be revising questions based on the first half of the year um, basically to make sure that you're prepared for your September exam which is obviously on everything that you've done this year so let's get started with some multiple choice questions First of all, it says a constant net force is applied to a crate which moves along a frictionless horizontal surface. Okay, so we have a crate and it has a constant net force, F net, which equals mass times acceleration. Okay, and it has a frictionless surface. It says which one of the following quantities remains constant while the force acts on the crate? Well, F net equals mass times acceleration, so let's have a look. The rate of change of velocity. Now, the rate of change of velocity is the same as acceleration. And I would say that since there's a constant net force, the constant the acceleration has to be constant as well. So I would say the correct answer is A. But let's just go through them and make sure the change of momentum has got nothing to do with the work done. Work done is equal to F delta X. The further it's moving, the more the work is done, so it can't be that. And the change in kinetic energy is going to be changing because it's getting faster and faster. So the correct answer is actually A, like we predicted. So it says a satellite experiences a gravitational force of magnitude F when it's sitting on the planet. And it tells you that the radius of the Earth is R. It now says the satellite now experiences a force of unknown height. So now it's at an unknown height above the surface of the Earth and its magnitude of the force is a quarter F. So now over here it's a quarter F. So do you agree that over here we've got, and originally we've got F is big G, mass of the Earth, mass of the satellite, all over R squared, right? Now we've got a quarter F. So we've got a quarter F means we've got a quarter of G M E M of the satellite all over R squared. That's what it means. But the gravitational constant, big G, doesn't change. The mass of the Earth doesn't change. The mass of the satellite doesn't change. So what does it mean? It means that this displacement here has to be, this is the same as saying 4R squared. Okay? So what does that mean? That means that the new distance between the centers, between the centers, equals 2r, because remember that this is the distance squared, so this 4r squared is all squared really, so that's how we're getting that the distance between the centers is 2r, but now it says the unknown height above the surface of the earth is, so this whole distance is 2r. And we know that this bit here is r, then what is this unknown distance? It is just little r. I mean, letter a, which is just big r. So this is quite a tricky question, and I like it very much. So you just need to work through it slowly and make sure that you understand what they're asking you. And then remember that they're asking you about the unknown height above the surface of the Earth. Because that's why they put this 2r in here, to trick you. Because most people go, oh, answer's 2r. No, it's not, because we have to subtract the r, which is the radius of the Earth. So therefore, the answer is just r. Let's do another example. Next question, it says the electric field pattern is two small charged objects are shown below. Which one of the following diagrams correctly shows the force experienced by a positive test charge placed at a point in the field? Okay, so first of all, we've got a positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and a negative, positive and a positive. So this diagram is incorrect for positive and negative, so we can ignore it. Okay, these are definitely correct, and that's correct for positive and positive. Then it says, the electric field pattern of two small charged objects is shown. They want a positive test charge. Now, the electric field patterns always act, electric field lines always act as if there was a positive test charge moving on it. So therefore, A is definitely going to be correct, 
B is wrong because it is going the wrong way. The electric field lines show the direction of a positive charge charge. And similarly for D, so the correct answer is A. Right, now let's do some chemistry. It says, which one of the following in the molecular form is the molecular formula of a compound that belongs to the same molecular series as but 2 iron? So molecular series, what are we talking about? We're talking about alkynes. And what you need to know about alkynes is a formula, which is CnH2n minus 2. So you have to just really apply this to these numbers and see which one works. So this would be C6, H2 times 6 minus 2, which is going to be 10. So that's wrong. But that is right. So yay, the correct answer is B. And it says, which one of the following statements is incorrect? Sunflower oil undergoes hydrogenation to form margarine is correct. Alkynes are more reactive than alkenes, that is correct. Alkynes will discolor a bromine solution without the assistance of a UV light. Alkanes undergo addition reactions. Alkanes cannot undergo addition reactions because they are single bonded. They can only undergo substitution reactions. So the correct answer is the incorrect statement, which is D. It says, which one of the following organic compounds has the lowest boiling point? The lowest boiling point is thing, something that's going to have the weakest intermolecular forces. Okay, and you guys can't write this IMFA, you have to write out the whole word. Not that you will on a multiple choice. Okay, so propen 1 all, propen 2 all, and propanoic acid all have got hydrogen bonds. Whereas propanol is a double bonded O, so yes, it is heavy, but it does not have a hydrogen bonding. So therefore, the correct answer is 1.3. And how do you know if they've got a hydrogen bonding? If they've got a hydroxyl group in them, they've basically got hydrogen bonding. Now it says, consider the reaction 2SO3 breaks up into 2SO2 plus O2 and delta H is 198 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so first of all, we know that that is endothermic and it's saying that it takes in 198 kilojoules for every mole. Okay, it says, which one of the following statements is true for this reaction? When two moles of SO2 are formed, okay, what has happened? So first of all, we know that the energy is absorbed because it's endothermic. So we can cross out released and released. And then it says this is per mole. So therefore, if we've got two moles of SO2 being released, we need to double that. The correct answer then is 396 kilojoules. 1.7. The graphs represent the change in the rate of the reaction. Guys, whenever you see the graphs, you have to do the first thing you have to do is read the y-axis because these could represent rate of change, they could represent number of moles, they could con represent concentration, all sorts of things. So you need to look at it and you can see that this is rate of reaction versus time for the reversible reaction that takes place when hydrogen gas and iodine are sealed in a container and delta H is smaller than so we know it's exo thermic. Okay. It says equilibrium was first established after five minutes and we can see that for the simple reason that there's nice parallel lines and remember these lines aren't really parallel, they're actually on top of each other. It's just that we can't see them when they're on top of each other if they're drawn on top of each other which is why they draw it as a dotted line and a star line just above or below each other. And it says what change of conditions was made at 15 minutes to change the rate of the reaction as indicated in the graph. So A says a catalyst was added, B the temperature was increased, C the temperature was decreased, and D an external pressure of the reaction mixture was decreased. Okay, so we've seen that the rate of the reaction, both the forward and the reverse reactions increased over here. Okay, and then stabilized again. This is where there was a catalyst. Okay, that's where the catalyst was added. Okay, so that is not true. Now, we want the rate of the reaction to decrease. Okay, the rate of the reaction to decrease. But do you know, this is the, now let's just work it out. This bit here is the forward reaction and this is the reverse reaction. So the reverse reaction happens this way. And do you see that the reverse reaction was very negatively 
effective. So the reverse reaction was very negatively affected. Okay, the rate of the reverse reaction. Okay, and the re reverse reaction is endothermic. Okay, so it definitely was. And then also, if you look very carefully, you can see that the overall rate has gone down. The overall rate has gone down. So the correct answer is that the temperature was decreased. The temperature was decreased. Okay? Because the overall rate has gone down and the reverse reaction was really slowed down. Okay, so therefore the temperature was decreased because the reverse reaction is endo. So it doesn't, it likes heat. So to cool it down would mean that the forward reaction is favored. Right, nice question. And those grade 12s are a sample of the type of questions that you could get for the work that you covered in the first half of the year. If you didn't understand what we were doing yet, please, please, please go back to those sections and go and study them, go watch the videos, and then go do the questions in the Turnable system.